Hello everyone, this is JD Calderon, and normally this would be Indie Comics Explained or The Comics Degenerate. This is probably along more along the lines of the degenerate part. Uh, long time fantasy film fan as well. Um, I got a story to tell you. I was uh, walking, just taking a walk with my wife, and uh, we w walked into a, a GameStop. When it was still around, we would regularly go through Toys R Us. But once, you know, they're all closed now, so we're like, okay, let's go through GameStop. They have toys and things. And we ran into these guys, which is uh, the new Dark Crystal pop set from, that, from the new show that's going to be coming on to Netflix, I think in a couple weeks, so about a week or so. So it's the Dark Crystal age of resistance and actually these guys uh, this is the one that initially attracted me to the whole thing agra because i have the original set of pops from the original dark crystal that they released I don't know, about a year and a half ago two years ago something like that and i looked at this one i said hey that one has a different set of clothes on her let me just open this up. Take a look at it. Because I haven't even taken a good look. That's actually pretty cool. I saw she had a nice little clothes. I mean, she has a nice little new clothes there. She has a little bath of little swirly things like she has a star. Oh, look. And they even put feet on the bottom now. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Little feet. So, yeah. Actually, uh, quite cool there. Set it on the side. And then we have, and that's the only one I recognized. And then I started looking, and I was like, oh, okay, maybe I'll pick this one up. But I said, you know, it was just the one. I thought maybe I'll just pass it by. Then I saw a second one. I'm pretty sure it was this one. And I was like, oh, okay, they got another one. Picked up this one, and this is Ryan. I guess this is going to be our lead protagonist for the show. And he is obviously a Gelfling, if you remember anything from the original picture. So he's probably going to be a little lead hero. got a little knife there. And he got a potion in his hand. It's looking kind of cool. There's some green in his hair. That's nice. All right. Little bands. The one thing I noticed about Pops is how much more uh, detail they've been getting in, like, <laughs> obviously not the face. But um, in other areas, I mean, like I like the little texture they have on the back of his little cloak there. It's really nice. Okay, so that's that. This is another character. I guess is new to the show. This is Deet with Baby Nurlock. Right, now, when I first saw her. I don't know if this was another race, but actually I've seen some additional photos where she has wings. So she's obviously another Gelfling. So we'll pop Deet out of there. Oh, look at that. Deet is a little weird looking little alien guy there. And she is, she's all green. So like I said, I like the little tasseling, it's really nice tassels i also like the fact that it's not symmetrical you know it looks like something like a person might have like you know like you know it's not perfect you know like you can see this one and this one are not the same you know she's <laughs> she's not neurotic you know there's some people who it has to be the same on every side so you, know, you can tell she's a little bit more free-flowing with the way uh, she looks so this is kind of cool she's holding a little i don't know sponge or something in her hand i mean i don't know if that'll have something to do with the story maybe she's cleaning up after the little guy Guy's kind of cute, little bug. Right. And we got a little potato, little potato person, um, Hup. And he looks kind of cool. Let's take him out of the box. And it's kind of cool because in, um, in the original series, you didn't see these guys do much of anything other than be victims. So. <laughs> 
or sometimes care, caretakers for the for the gelflings as well. But you really didn't get to see much more than that from them. So it's gonna be kind of nice. It's like, like I said, the the detailing and the clothing is really nice. I like that. A little fringe all the way around. You know, again, not asymmetrical. They made it look kind of like you know something that uh, an actual person would wear. It's not exactly perfect on both sides. So that's an interesting detail to, to look at in the toy. Because, you know, sometimes, um, you know, we do comics and do logo design and that sort of thing. And you want everything to be, you know, you want everything balanced, you know, to have an equal amount of things on each side, you know. Uh, but when it comes down to this, when you're trying to have something that looks a little bit more realistic, I guess, you know, that would be, um, this is more natural, you know. Not everything is balanced in nature, so, you know, at least not when it comes down to looks. All right. And then we have this guy, the hunter. Obviously a Skeksis. Look, my box, this one came like a, a couple of dents and a couple of rips. The thing is just worthless now. Not going to be worth anything on the secondary market. It's kind of funny because it's just going up on my shelf. So I don't really care too much about that. Uh, but I always joke with my wife, how dare you take it out of the box. Let's see what we got here. Ah. So we pull him out. Boom. Oh, this guy is really complicated. Look at this. I didn't even realize. This guy got four arms, two legs, and a tail. Look at that. Bunch of swords. It's pretty neat looking little setup there. A little skull as a helmet you know it's pretty cool like I said the detailing is really nice I don't know if he has tiny skulls or whatever those things are it's pretty cool I'm looking forward to this show I was a huge fan of the uh, original movie um so when they announced this show from Netflix I was like really excited so I'm just hoping it's going to be good. It's um, it's always the thing about um, the writing, story, that sort of thing. I'm 99% certain that it's going to look incredible. It's probably going to even look better than the original movie. Only for the dint that we now have technology that the, the CGI can push it beyond. Even though they're doing all puppetry, I'm pretty sure they're going to make some CGI in. At least in the minimum of uh, removing the um the wires because that's one of the things you saw in the original movie whereas today they can take all that stuff out digitally and it's i don't think it's a big issue so yeah this is pretty cool i ran into these had to get the whole set because like i said i'm a degenerate so couldn't control myself but i think these guys are a lot of fun they're gonna look great on my uh shelf you know the only problem is i'm running out of shelf space uh downstairs in my office I have um, a decent amount of space, but you know it's it's filled up. I have all kinds of statues and things. I have, I don't even, I don't even have that many pops. I only have ever collected the Dark Crystal set. I have the Fawn from uh, from Pan's Labyrinth, as well as uh, I always forget his name. Is the guy with the two eyeballs in his hands, and I also have the yeah the Dark Crystal set. And the Labyrinth set from Pops. And that's pretty much it. And the Fawn and the two guys from the, the Pan's Labyrinth set. And I have a single figure that was given to me. It was uh, Jon Snow. But he's actually on a different uh, desk. So, yeah. But these are pretty cool. I enjoy these. I love the detailing on them. Pops always doing a, a great job. You know, even though people do say they destroyed the vinyl community. <laughs> Uh, by um, releasing these very inexpensive there was once a very vibrant uh, original art community in, in pop vinyl in, in vinyl and they were very expensive I was, I was in the early 2000s mid to early 2000s when I first started seeing them we ourselves wanted to join we eventually had a single figure made our own guy it was this guy right here Silvermane from Tall Tales so Silvermane we actually uh, had him manufactured in China it wasn't cheap 
Um, and we actually have this guy available if anybody wants any. I'm pretty sure you can find him in the store. We don't sell them for too much. It's like $20 plus shipping. Uh, but he looks pretty damn awesome. His little arms move. Yeah. And his little head moves. Yeah. And that's on his waist. That's pretty much it for him as far as movement. It's never really designed for posability. It's just you get him in his with his stare. And he's one of the main characters in Tall Tales. So it was pretty cool. So if anybody's interested, you go is uh, go to Tall Tales online and go to go to the store and you can see this guy. Sometimes we offer him up as a combo pack with the um, with the trade paperback whenever we do our Kickstarters. Uh, we usually it's a pretty reasonable price. You can do get both for about 50, 60 bucks. <clears throat> Just very reasonable. Uh, but these guys are really cool. You know, they weren't cheap to produce, but you know, it was a lot of fun. You only live once, as I say. But that's Silverman, and these are my Dark Crystal Age of Resistance pops, and they are awesome. So, thanks a lot, guys. If you like the um, if you like this unboxing, you know, please hit the like button, subscribe. And if you want to check out some of my books, go to the Oswald Chronicles or Tall Tales Online and go check out some great books. Thanks a lot and have a great day.